Want to know who's who in the Jeffrey Epstein Zoo? Journalists Lisa and Jen bring you the ultimate deep dive. Prince Andrew's crimes are just the start. We'll lay it all out. Hello and welcome to the Prince and the Pervert podcast. My name is Lisa Tate. Forada, I'm Jen Tarrant. What's happening, Jen? It's a bit hot. I know. We'll soon be back in the proper studio, I think. Back with our punk boys. Will you miss this room? No, because we can use it for emergencies. Like when somebody else gets arrested. That is true. I know. Imagine one o'clock in the laundry. Did you remember that there's a grand jury going on, another one at the moment? I know. I read that in the Miami Herald. It was just inside all the Jelaine documents. Mm. So something could be happening very soon. We don't know. I'm prepared. I have coffee. I always have coffee ready. Oh, good. And chocolate. (laughs) I need the chocolate. The other day, actually, we were listening in the car to our Jelaine episode that we did at three in the morning. And my daughter said, Mum, why do you sound crap and Jen sounds good? And I said, it's three in the morning. We were going through Zoom, thank you. Yes, we're in different locations and we managed to pull it off. And then she said, well, I have to hear you all the time. I don't want to have to listen to this podcast. I don't think my kids have listened. Don't you? No, I've got a feeling my husband does, but it pretends not to. Shout out to Mr. Jen. But I did find her watching the Netflix Jeffrey Epstein recently, so maybe a little bit had gotten through. Well, we always sit down for dinner and we talk about what we've done. You know, we try and keep the phones off the table, but the kids know all the major players. Do they? And my daughter will often ask, oh, has Groff been arrested yet? And it's like, oh... Be still my beating heart. I'm so proud I've done well with this child. Well, this one, yeah. So, okay, that just reminds me of something. One of our fabulous listeners and Patreon supporters went somewhere where most of us haven't been this week. Wouldn't dare to go, but she went there. How cool yes, is she? She's absolutely so cool. She went out to Jelaine's New Hampshire lair. And there's wonderful photos. If you go to our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter, we've retweeted them. Yes, and she's got a video. Have you seen the video? Yeah, jumping up and down. And she's very funny. So she went into Bradford, that's the town, and got a laundromat. And she took a photo of that and said, is that where Jelaine's getting her laundry, sorry, her money laundered? Oh, it's good. But I don't think Jelaine would do her own money laundering. Well, no, she had Jeffrey, darling. (laughs) And, but he didn't know how to separate the whites and the blacks. True. So that was a problem. So maybe she had to DIY. Possibly. Mm. Now, speaking of black. Leon Black, come on down. Now, listen, we'll talk about him in a second. I just got to do the run through because we got a bit distracted. Jen has got a big piece today on the Zorro Ranch sisters. Don't you, Jen? Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I've got something about Sarah Kellen and a potential defence. I've also got something on Epstein's Black Book, and you've got something about Prince Andrew. Oh, poor Prince Andrew. Mm -hmm. Not. Not. Okay, I'm going to start from CNN Business. Wall Street tycoon and Apollo Global Management co-founder Leon Black expressed regret. Now, all these people express their regret, don't they? For his dealings with the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. So he wrote a letter to his investors and then the share price went down by almost 6%. Oh dear. So the letter provided to CNN Business by Apollo, so it's a private equity firm. Do you know what they do, private equity? Just buy up bits, do they? And I think so, and make millionaires more millionaires. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. We should Google that one day. Okay, so the New York Times had a piece that revealed more details about the billionaire's relationship with Epstein, who was convicted in, as we all know, 2008, blah, 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 found dead, yada, yada, yada. Black may have paid, now this is the bit that gets me, up to $75 million to Epstein for consulting and other services. That's huge. What for? Wow, that's a huge amount of money. What was Epstein doing and what were the services? That's what I want to know. What exactly? There's something bigger going on that we don't know about. And it's a financial crime, allegedly. 
So I think at the moment we're out in the dark. Oh, <laughs> pardon the pun, Leon Black, out in the dark. dark. In the shadows. In the shadows. So, But this is even more disgusting. He often socialised and dined with him after Epstein had been in jail. See, you know he's been to jail, you, and most of these people would have realised that the plea deal turned it from being horrific to, uh, you know, prostitutes, uh, you know, who in the lines of Hugh Grant. Mm. So it was just prostitutes, you know. But they knew. They would have known. And also, he used to, Epstein lack social braces so it'd always be like <laughs> what do you think of massages <laughs> and then there was another time at a dinner where he said okay but what's that got to do with pussy <laughs> so he was base it's locker room stuff we're talking about he doesn't hide it no i think that was one way of him working out who was a pervert i'm not saying leon black's a pervert it was a signaling sign yeah it Be was his code word yeah do you want massage? No, thank you. I do not. Do not touch me. This is what Black is saying. None of the reporting in the recent New York Times article is inconsistent in any way with the information I shared with you over a year ago. So he's saying you already put it out there. So he asked Epstein for estate planning tax and advice on philanthropic endeavours because these people have always got a foundation or a charity. Makes them look good. Gives them an air of, you know, decency and also a good way to hide money. Well, remember we got Epstein who started up that foundation for the Jubin girl and then funneled the money through the girl into Ava Jubin's cancer charity. That's right. Ava Jubin, she was Epstein's girlfriend for 11 years. Yes, Miss Sweden. Miss Sweden. Okay, so occasionally he would meet with Epstein at his townhouse now, apparently that's a real freak ride as well, because one of the first things you get asked, and I'll go into this in a minute about the black book, when you go in there, they're like, oh, do you want a massage? Ugh. Anyone walks into my house and it's like, do you want a coffee? Yeah. Not sex? Ugh. Someone walks into my house, I'm like, why haven't you called? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> With the benefit of hindsight and knowing everything that has come to light about Epstein's despicable conduct, but this is it, more than 15 years ago. That doesn't nah. diminish it. I'm sorry, Mr Black. You're a shocker. A Barry Crocker. As we'd say here. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes because the Jubins and, okay, so Ava Jubin's husband, he's a billionaire and he had a hedge fund as well, but he had to retire due to the allegations They've been subpoenaed as well by the US Virgin Islands in the case of assessing Epstein's estate to go through to the victims. Mm. So there's a few big names rolling around. They should be rocking in a corner. Yes, exactly. Now, Jen, speaking of people who should be rocking in a corner, allegedly just my opinion. Okay, now, a while ago, Agent Hades, shout out Agent Hades, listed a couple of names, sisters, and he had a little bit of info on them. So I went digging. Now, Agent Hades has gone through the black book, but he tries to take out the little people, right? Yes. And I think that's important because we focus on people like Leon Black, right? But Epstein was only able to do what he did with a vast army of secretaries, receptionists, drivers, butlers, Doctors. cooks, chefs, Doctors, candle makers, candle makers, logistics people. There were so many people working for him. So I went following where Agent Hades left off. But shout out Agent Hades. I'd like to introduce you all to Sharon Healy, born in 1971, and her little sister, Michelle Lynn Healy, who was born a few years later in 1974. Okay, so these girls grew up in Port Jefferson Station, New York. They're still close on Facebook to a lot of their old schoolmates. Mm. Now, their parents have divorced, but Mum Cheryl has moved closer to them. You see, these two girls, for some strange reason, these siblings have both ended up in New Mexico. Maybe they're cowgirls, are they? Possibly, like their boots, their cowboy boots. Wool classes? Well, no, I don't think they have wool out there. Not that I've seen in any of their photographs that they keep sticking up everywhere for me to look at. But anyway. Oh, one of them likes fishing. Definitely likes fishing. 
around the world she likes fishing. Okay, so now both live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, as does Mum Cheryl. Now they had both, interestingly enough, lived in various locations and homes, apartments owned by Epstein. So I tried to track when they started. Who started first with Epstein? Was it one sister got the other sister in? Which one it was? Sorry about the dog in the background. That means Mossad's walking down the He's driveway. He's recalcitrant, that dog. I know. I'll have to feed him more cheese. <laughs> so I found Shannon was living in around 1993 in New York. 19 West 69th Street, New York. And then Michelle, the little sister, joined her in about 95 when they moved to 156 East 34th Street. So it's around this time frame that I think Shannon, the older sister, started working for Epstein. So I reached out to Maria Farmer, the whistleblower on Epstein, mm. who rang the FBI and anyone she could think of in the summer of 96. And she confirmed that Shannon was working for Epstein as a receptionist at the Helmsley Palace offices. In New York? In New York. Now, interesting enough, those offices were originally rented by Stephen Hoffenberg back, oh, a good eight years beforehand. When he was working with Epstein. And in the end, Epstein was in there with an office and so was Justine Ghislaine Maxwell. So Shannon was one of the people that Maria rang from the Wexner compound asking for help. And this is from Maria. She hung up on me. Wow. So Maria reached out to Shannon asking for help and Shannon hung up on her. So I'm going to ask her about that too, by the way. Good. I'll email them again. They're ignoring our emails. We have been in em well trying to contact them via email and we are using work accounts that we know are reaching them.